Today we are going to learn how to place a nasogastric tube. A nasogastric tube is a tube that goes through the nose and into the stomach. They're commonly used to suction out gastric contents and provide enteral access for medications or tube feeds. While they're frequently used in the hospital setting, there are some contraindications to placement, including bad facial fractures, nasopharyngeal obstruction, esophageal perforation, and a recent fork anastomosis. Next, let's go over the supplies we'll need to place an NG tube. A nasogastric tube refers to any tube going from the nose to the stomach. There are traditionally two types. First, we have the large bore Salem sump nasogastric tube. These are used to suction out the stomach or administer medications and tube feeds. These tubes are made of a harder plastic and have multiple holes at the end, and a separate lumen, usually colored blue, that acts as a sump. This allows air into the stomach to prevent the tube from getting stuck up against the stomach wall. The other type of tube is often called a small bore feeding tube, such as a Dabhoff or a Corpac. These tubes have a single smaller lumen and are soft and more compliant. They usually have a weighted end and a wire in the lumen to stiffen the tube when it is placed. We will also need lubricating jelly, which will help us easily pass the tube through the nasopharynx and down into the stomach. We will need tape to help secure a nasogastric tube once it's in place. Lastly, we will need a syringe, and I want to highlight here that we need a catheter tip syringe, not a lure lock syringe. To begin, you should talk to your patient and explain why a nasogastric tube is important for their care. I'm pretty honest with my patients. I tell them that placing the nasogastric tube is normally miserable, but most people feel better once their stomach is decompressed. It is important that your patient is on board with the process and understands that you want them to focus on swallowing the tube. If you don't have an honest conversation with your patient up front, it can make placing the tube more difficult. Next, you'll position your patient and set up your supplies. This works best if your patient is sitting up as much as possible. You will need to measure the NG tube. To do this, place the tip of the NG tube at the nostril of the patient and bring the NG tube around their ear. Then bring the proximal end of the NG tube down through their midline over their stomach. This gives you an estimate of how much of the NG tube you will need to insert for the tip to be in the stomach. Average insertion depth is around 55 to 65 centimeters for an adult. There are markings on the NG tube that can help you keep track of how much of the tube has been inserted. Next, have your patient sit up and put their chin to their chest. I use my left hand to support the patient's head as their natural reaction is to lean backwards. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna use my right hand to insert the tube. Apply lubricating jelly to the distal tip of your tube and insert the tube through one of the nares. Advance by sliding along the floor of the nasopharynx while aiming posterior. Advance until you meet some resistance. This is where you'll be making a turn from the nasopharynx into the oropharynx. In order to make this turn, you will need to apply steady pressure to the tube. Then I ask my patients to start swallowing, and I advance the tube while they swallow. This helps the tube move from the oropharynx into the esophagus while avoiding the trachea. Sometimes having the patient drink water through a straw can be helpful, but it is not required. The tube can get slippery as you advance. I like to use my thumb and first finger to advance and my other three fingers to stabilize the tube. As you are advancing and repositioning your hand, you want to make sure to never fully let go of the tube as it could slide out of the patient's nose. Continue advancing until you reach the area you previously measured prior to insertion. Once the tube is fully inserted, you can secure it with tape. You need to obtain a thoracoabdominal x-ray. Sometimes you will see team members pushing air through the nasogastric tube and using a stethoscope to listen for bubbles over the stomach. This technique can also be used for confirmation, but given the variability in physical exam, it is often safer to confirm with radiographic imaging. On x-ray, you want to confirm that the distal tip of your nasogastric tube is in the patient's stomach. In order to do this, you need to start by identifying the nasogastric tube itself. In this image, the tube is highlighted in green. There is also a portion of the tube on the patient's left side highlighted here. This portion of the nasogastric tube is outside of the patient and resting on their chest. Next, identify the diaphragm, which I've highlighted here in yellow. You want to make sure that your nasogastric tube crosses the diaphragm. If your nasogastric tube never crosses the diaphragm, it's likely in the patient's lung and it should not be used. This is an example of a nasogastric tube placed in the lung. Once again, the NG tube is highlighted in green. I've also identified the diaphragm, which I've highlighted in yellow. It's challenging to see the diaphragm on the right side of the patient due to a disease process in the lung. Regardless, we know that our stomach is in our left upper quadrant, so a nasogastric tube curving towards the right is very suspicious. Lastly, I have highlighted the trachea in blue. You can see how the NG tube curves to follow the right bronchus. Combining all of this information, we can conclude that this NG tube is in the lung and should be removed. Now back to our appropriately placed nasogastric tube. You will notice that there is a small area of tubing that does not have a radio-opaque marker. This helps identify where the suction ports begin. Anything distal to this area will have suction applied to it. You typically want the suction ports located in the patient's stomach, as shown in this image. You can confirm that the suction ports are in the stomach by verifying that the break in the radio opaque marker is below the diaphragm and does not cross the midline. 
This is an example of a nasogastric tube that is post-pyloric, or placed into the duodenum. The tube is highlighted in green, and you can see the course of the tube coming into the left upper quadrant and then crossing over the spine into the right upper quadrant. If your nasogastric tube crosses the spine, then the tip is likely in the duodenum. Lastly, I want to highlight the difference on x-ray between the two types of nasogastric tubes. On the left is the large bore Salem sump nasogastric tube. These can be identified by the thin radiopaque line with a break in the line near the distal end. This is in comparison to our small bore feeding tube, which is on the right. These have a weighted tip and can be seen as a bulky radiopaque marker at the end of the tube. Additionally, they have a continuous radiopaque marker that extends to the tip of the tube. After you have confirmed that your nasogastric tube is in the appropriate position, you will need to secure the tube in a more durable manner. This is often done with a special tape made for securing NG tubes. However, you can also use a bridle, which is a loop of silicone or cotton string that is passed around a bone in the nose and secured to the tube. These devices can help prevent your tube from being inadvertently pulled out.